Okay, let's try this one more time. Uh, give this a second to see if a couple people come back in. Having some audio problems this morning on this setup, and I want to make sure that I have that corrected. Uh, I thought I had the setup going correctly, but anyway, if you can't hear me, let me know. I hope I've got the audio problem corrected. I can actually see the audio bar here. That's perfect. Okay, I'm going to start over again. So, uh, welcome to the Man Cave. It's a rainy Saturday here at the Man Cave. It's about 11.15 in the morning here in North Carolina. And uh, I'm hoping to start doing some more live streaming. I got my live streaming camera set up back out of the box. I haven't used it in a long time. I charged everything up and got my microphone here connected to my Android tablet. And I think everything's working here at the moment. Sometimes the audio setup here is a little confusing. So I'm hoping to do this on a regular basis. I'd like to do this uh, live stream at least once a week especially do some Q&A sessions when I can get my wife available to help us out here by watching the questions. With this software I'm using, I can't see your comments as they come in but one at a time on this screen. Uh, and like I said, maybe I'd like to do this weekly. So we'll see how it goes uh, and we'll shoot from there. But this will be the first one of a new series of live streams that I'm going to do here from the Man Cave. Uh, I don't know if I've made an official announcement of this or not, but a lot of you already know uh, from the content I've been doing. Uh, I'm doing some social media content now and a lot of video content for Atlanta Grill Company instead of a Kamado Joe. Uh, I'm still supporting Kamado Joe. I'm always going to be a Kamado Joe advocate. I love these grills. I'm just uh, doing the video content now through Atlanta Grill Company rather than through Kamado Joe. So that. Uh, that's where that lies, and I've had a real good experience with Atlanta Grill Company. Uh, it's a great company, and trust me, guys, I spend a lot of money there myself. So uh, it's a it's a toy store for big kids. We all love it. So that's that's where we are on that. Um, about a week ago, I think, if you scroll back on the Man Cave Meals Facebook page, you saw a post I made about some charcoal testing and. I wanted to talk a little bit about that today because the charcoal testing is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, I see the debates constantly on social media about lump charcoal, uh, what's the best, and it's the same story every time. Everybody's got their reasons they like a particular charcoal, uh, and when the new guy comes around, just got his Kamado grill, he'll come to the social media group and say, hey, what's the best charcoal to use? And he doesn't realize that question's been answered multiple times, probably within the same week. And all the answers are always the same. Everybody posts what charcoal they buy, what charcoal they like, and why they like it. Uh, and all these reasons are good, but most of these reasons they post are uh, anecdotal, uh, subjective reasons. Uh, there's a couple that come to mind quickly. Uh, the size of the, of the lump, that seems to be a big factor in determining whether or not people like brand A over brand B. Uh, they like, they'll say that uh, brand A burns hotter, brand A burns longer, uh, brand B sparks too much, brand C smells bad when you light it up, and all of these things are subjective, with the exception of big block, big big chunks versus small chunks. I've used a lot of brands of charcoal since I started cooking on a Kamado grill. I've probably used more brands than the average person. And every bag that I've, every brand that I've bought multiple bags of, I get bags where I've got some big chunks in it and I get bags where I've got a lot of small bits. And I've come to the conclusion after using a lot of that charcoal that the size of those chunks doesn't make as big a difference when it comes to cooking. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that when I get down into some of the testing I did. Uh, I actually had some difficulty with the stuff I had with the very large size chunks and I had to throw out the testing on that because my testing parameters that I set up to test everything else just didn't work with that lump. But the reason I did my testing is I wanted to have some data. I wanted to be able to see 
whether my charcoal burns hotter or my charcoal burns longer. Those are two measurements of charcoal that matter when it comes to cooking. You know, if your charcoal doesn't burn very long, it's not very good. If it doesn't burn hot enough when you need it, it's not going to get the job done. So it's worthless at that point. So I wanted to test those two things. And I did this on six different brands of charcoal. I got a small kick ash basket. I brought my kitchen scale out here and I weighed out two pounds exactly. Well, give or take a quarter of an ounce on either side. I weighed out two pounds of charcoal put it in the small basket where I could keep all that charcoal close together where it would burn. And I tried to use pieces of charcoal that were similar in size uh, through all the different brands where I didn't have a big variation in that. And I used my propane torch to light the top of the charcoal. I held it for exactly 45 seconds in the center on the top. And then I set that basket down in the bottom of my Kamado Joe Classic 3. I put the heat deflector in, put the grill grates in, and then I used the fireboard too to run the grill. I told the fireboard I want to run this grill at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I set my top vent at the first mark, and I did this the same way on every single charcoal where the, the, the environment was as close to the same as I could have it from one brand to the next. And what I did when I engaged the fireboard, I started my timer and I said, okay, how long is it going to take? I told the fireboard to run us at 300 degrees. So I measured how long it took to get from the starting point to 300 degrees. And then once I was at 300 degrees, how long did my grill stay at 300 degrees before the temperature fell back down below 280 with the fan running? And, uh, I got a lot of different numbers there, so I got a lot of uh, testing that, you know, some of these charcoals in that setup, in that environment, burn longer than others, and uh, the time it took to get to temperature, I find, is not that different between many of them. It might have been 10 or 15 minutes difference between one, and I know that sounds like a lot of time, but I had my fireboard set up to run conservatively. I had the fan. Uh, throttle back to a maximum of 20% of its capacity. I wasn't trying to see how fast I could get it to temp. I just wanted everything to be the same. So um, you can look at that number if you scroll back, like I said, to last week sometime on the Man Cave Mills page. I posted a screenshot of my spreadsheet where you can see how long each of these charcoals burned at 300 degrees during my test. And uh, the second thing I wanted to test was how hot the charcoal will get because everybody likes to say, well, my charcoal burns hotter. And uh, to test how hot the charcoal gets, I did the same setup. I set, I weighed out exactly two pounds of charcoal, put it in my kick ash basket, gave it 45 seconds of the torch, put it in, put my heat deflectors on, and this time I opened the top vent on the grill fully and I ran the fireboard with its fan running at its maximum speed of 100%. And the objective there was to see how hot the grill would get during that setup. And I had some that got significantly hotter than others. I had probably 75 or 80 degrees of variation. I think the lowest one, the, the lower ones I had were in the 350, 360 degree range. And the hottest ones I got, you know, were up to 4, 440 somewhere in that range. So some of them burn hotter in the exact same configuration than the other. So that gives you some actual data to, to go with, you know, when, when you say, well, my charcoal burns hotter than this one. If you've tested it like that, you'll know which ones burn hotter. So the brands I tested were uh, Kamado Joe Big Block. I tested Cowboy Rockwood, Jealous Devil, Fogo, Regular, and the the six ones escaping me here at the moment. I don't remember what it is because I don't still have that bag sitting out here where I can see it. But uh, I tested a lot of charcoal. Uh, I tested two versions of what we call the extremely large lump charcoal. I tested the Fogo Super Premium which these chunks were huge. 
I tested the uh, B and B extra large stuff, and their chunks were just as big as the Fogo Super Premium, and I had problems running those tests under the parameters that I just described to you. Uh, 45 seconds with the torch on top of that, two pounds, uh, would not get it lit to where it would stay lit. And I did some additional things to get it lit, and once I did get it lit, neither one of those charcoals would come up to 300 degrees on the longevity test, and I was not able to get them uh, very hot, or, or even much hotter than that on the uh, uh, maximum temperature test but the reasons there are not because the charcoal is not capable it's because the the size is too big I'm sorry I live in the world's noisiest neighborhood there's a, a diesel truck here come to check his mail across the street at the post office making a lot of noise so but anyway those big chunks are actually counterproductive in some way it takes them longer to get hotter you've got to build a bigger fire to get them started and uh, longevity I'm not sure about like I said because I wasn't able to get a valid longevity test and I'm not trying to say here that these charcoals are not great charcoals but they they did not perform properly under the testing parameters that I had set up to test everything else in order for me to test those adequately I would need to set up a different set of parameters to make those charcoals shine so that's that's where I ended up there and I just tossed those out because the numbers were terrible compared to everything else I tested and I knew the charcoal was not bad and it would have been fair unfair for me to represent that charcoal under those same settings uh, and I also on that spreadsheet I broke down uh, in price what I paid for each of these charcoals uh, per pound I gave it in a per pound price and uh, you can have a look at that, but next time you're talking about charcoal and uh, giving reasons why your charcoal is better, have a look at that or do, do this test yourself and see what you think. I'm not trying to suggest you should buy brand A or you should buy brand B, but you want to know uh, what, you want to understand what you're saying and understand what's fact and what's fiction when you're uh, describing what your charcoal does. There's a lot of uh, subjective reasons to buy one brand of charcoal over the other also, and that uh, primarily is aroma and flavor. A lot of people will complain about the aroma of one charcoal, or they'll complain about the flavor produced by another. And uh, this is something I got to see firsthand when I was doing this testing, especially with the aroma, because I have been cooking on Kamado Joe uh, big block for so long without using any other brands over the last couple of years that uh, when I put some of these other brands in my grill I could smell a difference I definitely could smell a difference and uh, I didn't come across anything that I thought smelled bad not at all everything smelled fine it was just different and the flavor that I get from these, the flavor difference is I really can't tell that much of a difference in the flavor I get from any of these charcoals. Hardwood lump charcoal is pretty clean. It's pretty clean burning. If you've got a clean burning fire, I'm not, I want to sit here and say it doesn't make a difference, but uh, I can't prove that. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on inside your grill that can create flavor issues that have nothing to do with the charcoal that grease residue that's built up off the last six months worth of cooking you've done if you don't keep your grill clean can have a much bigger impact on flavor of something you cook today than the charcoal does there's the charcoal is insignificant in my opinion on what or when it comes to uh making a flavor statement when I make flavor statements, when I'm using hardwood lump charcoal, come from my seasonings, obviously. That's the big thing. And what kind and how much smoking wood I might put in there with that charcoal. Those things have a bigger impact. So, yeah, charcoal testing was fun. I learned a lot. I, the results that I got, if you go back and look at those, uh, I, was, I was surprised at the results I got. I, I didn't expect to see what I saw. And uh, yeah, it's really eye-opening. So that's how the charcoal testing went.
I enjoyed that, and I may do some additional ones down the road. There was a couple of brands I would like to have tested, but I had some trouble getting some of those right now. As some of you know, we're seeing some shortages of hardwood lump charcoal, and uh, there's a lot of them out there that the shelves are empty. So I hope everybody's surviving and getting uh, charcoal when they need it. That being said, I'm going to say one thing people are going to hate me for. If you run out of charcoal, if you run out of hardwood lump charcoal on your for your Kamado grills, it's okay to go ahead and use briquettes. You can run your grill on briquettes. I know it's not the optimum thing to do, but it'll work, and it's just going to make a mess of ash that you've got to clean out when you're done. If you've got a temperature control system, you can run that grill as long as you want on a load of briquettes. Trust me, I've done it before just to see if it would work. I wanted to be able to speak intelligently about that, so I've tested it. It works. So you can use briquettes to run your Kamado. Okay, that's enough about charcoal. I've been going on too long. So uh, upcoming videos that I'm going to be doing, I've already got one of these done. The next video that's going to be coming up in our loop is uh, what I call barbecue lasagna. Uh, one of my local barbecue joints I follow on Facebook posted a picture a couple weeks ago. They said, we've got a barbecue lasagna special for you tonight. And I didn't get a chance to go get any of it to try it. Theirs was using barbecue beef. And uh, I got to thinking about that. I said, well, that wouldn't be hard to do. And I said, it'd be a great opportunity to use up some leftover barbecue that I had in the freezer. And I had pulled pork and I had chicken. I know a lot of people don't mix pulled pork and chicken, but man, I did. I mixed it and we made a lasagna out of that with barbecue sauce and four different kinds of cheese. And uh, it came out really well. I cooked that guy on the alpha oven. And uh, at first, when I pulled that thing out of the oven, I wasn't, I wasn't very uh, happy with what I saw. My noodles that were up top were a little crispy. And uh, as I ate that, after I finished the video, I said, man, I've stumbled across something here I like. That, uh, that crunchy, that little crunch that I was getting from those uh, top noodles that had gotten crisp in that oven were amazing. And uh, I actually went back and shot another addendum segment to tag on to the end of that video to talk about that. Uh, if you don't like crunchy, you can top it with an extra layer of cheese or you can let it do this. So. We've got a good lasagna video coming up. It'll be up uh, Friday or Saturday of this coming week. And um, I want to do another uh, video on beer brats. Probably, uh, I'm actually probably going to make that video using the PK360 grill. I could do that on the Kamado Joe, but I'm trying to keep some of these other grills in the rotation. Uh, keep everything burning here. I've got enough grills. I need to cook on all of them periodically. So... I'm going to use the PK360 when we do that. Uh, we're going to do some beer brats that are going to just be amazing. Uh, uh, I'm also trying to come up with some ideas of things I would like to do in live streaming. Cooking and live streaming, I know everybody wants to see cooking done live, but uh, I can do that if people are actually interested in seeing that, but there's a lot of dead time uh, when you're watching a cook go live, unless it's something fast like uh, smash burgers or maybe something like I could do a shrimp scampi or I could do uh, stir fried rice in the wok on a Kamado and do a live cook that way. The live cook would be uh, really good. So if you've got some suggestions for short, fast live cooks you'd like to see. Uh, I recently, uh, at my wife's request, we bought one of these Vitamix blenders. Uh, and that's got my wheels spinning also. There's some pretty cool things you can do with the Vitamix that I might do live as well. I'm going to resurrect my personal uh, frozen margarita recipe. I quit drinking mixed drinks a long time ago, but I've got to try it in this Vitamix. So I might just make a short video on that or might even do that live uh, because my frozen margaritas were good. So... Leave me a comment here about what you'd like to see live, and if you've got any questions, uh, leave them here. I'll try to answer them, and maybe I'll try to set up just some uh, live question and answer sessions once I can get my wife to help me. 
I need a second person to help me with that. So uh, until then, you guys have a good weekend.